What's up, YouTube? Colin here. I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go, right? Talk about some stuff. Some stuff I've been thinking about, some stuff I've been posting about, human nature, people. Oh man, it's just a lot. You know, I've had to deal with some nonsense this week. And nonsense that I have to deal with, that you probably have to deal with, is usually at the hands of another human, right? I love humans, you know? I love my tribe, my peoples. Um, I like most people, you know? Strangers are usually friendly, whatever. But some people can be a real pain in the ass. And there's a lot of things. Um, but one of the big ones is something that's actually been a theme this week that I've you know, felt from um, various parties. And this is not like a new thing. It's come up, it comes up all the time. You can probably recognize it in your own life, people that you have to deal with on a regular basis. But it's this idea of projection and blame. You know, we humans, we do a lot to protect our ego, you know, because if our ego is, is hurt or damaged or susceptible, that can actually lower our standing in a, an environment where we would have to actually be as equal as possible to people around us, where, where our brand, like our person matters, right? Where we have to really be viewed as good in the other tribe member's eyes because we could be expelled from the group. It's, a, you know, it's a serious concern or we wouldn't have access to mates or we wouldn't have access to food and sharing. Like... So there's a lot of reasons why humans are very, very sensitive to, to admitting mistakes, um, to you know their ego, to perception of others, things like that. Like, there's an evolutionary reason for this. But today, you see a lot of talk about self awareness. You need self awareness to combat a lot of the mental gymnastics and the tricks that your mind plays when it in regards to your ego. Right? That's, that's really the big thing for today. In our modern world, with the amount of people we have access to, and you know, we can have strangers that comment on our stuff on social media, which is not something our ancestors would have ever had to deal with. We have people that can walk up to us on the street and just say things or do things or attack us or steal from us or whatever. And so we have to kind of be on guard at times. We have to be vigilant. This is stuff that there are some similarities to living in the wild where we would have to be vigilant around the corner or under a rock or in a cave or other humans we didn't know. We'd be very careful of dealing with them because if they were dangerous, they could potentially kill us and take our women and children and a lot of bad things, right? So a lot here, of course. Evolutionary psychology, evolutionary biology, ancestral health, ancestral our ancestral past, right? It does direct and explain all of this, but I'm not gonna really go into that today. I'm just gonna kind of talk about some of the modern day um, ways to deal with like blaming other people for your own shit, right? And the idea of extreme ownership, which is more needed than ever. But really what it comes down to is this idea, um, and you know what, before we get to that, here's a big one. And I fall victim to this all the time, right? When we don't have all the data, and this happens a lot, you know, this is when we're judging people, when we're jumping to conclusions, when we're getting mad about something, what I've found is that every time I've, I've assumed and I've gotten angry about something, I then get more information about the situation and it usually makes more sense so that it's not as bad. Now I've had employees, vendors, suppliers, uh, you know, girlfriends, relationships, like every single time in my past, almost without fail, when I assumed something too harshly, I was always corrected by finding out more information. Now this is a freaking a, a gold rule for today right? Because just we hear things from people, hearsay, you know, we get a little bit of the picture. We don't have all the data. Humans are not good at kind of explaining what happened. They don't give all the details. Like we cannot assume, right? It's very, very dangerous to do that. And you want to get as much data as possible before you make opinions on things or you make judgments on things. That is actually a really good thing to do that is kind of correlated to projecting and blaming people, right? Because you get more, the more information you get, the more informed your decision can be. If you're gonna judge somebody, or you're gonna get mad at somebody, don't you wanna have as much information as possible? <laughs> it's crazy that we have to be like that. Like, if you're gonna buy a car, or a flat screen TV, or some big, per a home, you know, a lot of people, and I'm not saying all people, some people will just like buy it because someone else has it, right? But a lot of us will spend a lot of time researching so that we feel like we're making an informed decision, right? The more money we spend, generally, the more research we do. It's a very core of relationships, connected, typically. When it comes to people, we don't have that same kind of linear uh, correlation. You know, most of us, and this is maybe a biological thing, um, we like to make fast decisions, you know, Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Uh, that's a good book to read on this topic. But we kind of jump to conclusions quickly when it comes to other people. 
without a lot of information and almost always without all the information, right? Like obviously if you're upset that somebody said something to you in the, in the moment and you're upset later on, that's one thing. But it's when you hear things from other people or when you know an invoice doesn't get paid and then somebody's yelling at you because you didn't pay an invoice and then one of your employees was supposed to pay it. And then you get mad at that person, you go after them and then they tell you that the person who you're trying to pay hasn't answered their phone or emails you know, for months, right? Things like that. that. And that stuff happens all the time. It's a breakdown in communication. Um, something goes wrong. If there's an error of technology, somebody forgets. Maybe it's a harmless mistake. Maybe somebody's adamantly trying to thwart something. This stuff happens all the time. And what I've learned when it comes to people, you need to get more information as much as possible and rely as little as possible on hearsay, which is hearsay is somebody telling you something, basically. Like when somebody tells you something that somebody else did or, say, or said, that's hearsay. And it's never 100% accurate, never, right? Just like the human mind is never 100% accurate. In fact, they have research that shows that every time the mind goes back to recall a memory, it changes that memory. Think about that for a second. Your mind is not like a static hard drive. It's not like you put a file in here as a memory and then you can go recall it any time. It doesn't work that way. Your mind, a lot of times, your memory, when you recall things, it will change based on what's going on in your life. If you're in a shitty place in life or you're depressed or something like that and things aren't going well and you recall situations, you're gonna have a negativity bias towards that memory. This is without fail, this is one of those first principles of the human organism and the human psyche. The human being is an imperfect creature. Our minds are imperfect. In fact, in a lot of cases, we're severely flawed in a lot of ways. There's this whole list of cognitive biases that humans fall victim to. Confirmation bias, affirmation bias, hindsight bias, selection bias, um, the Dunning-Kruger effect where people think they're a lot better at things than they really are. Like there's so many examples of these mental deficiencies that people walk around on a daily basis and have not the slightest clue they even exist. A lot of people walk around and they think they know themselves. They think they know all the things going on in their life. They think they know their their expertise or their job or whatever. In a lot of cases, people are, are they're either half right or they're severely wrong or they're severely lacking in integral information. Like a lot of people aren't even aware enough to know what makes them happy or what they actually want in life or what they're, what they're trying to accomplish. What are their six month goals, their one year goals, their five year goals? Do they want kids, do they not? Like most of these big life decisions are just byproducts of kind of meandering through life, responding to things that happen, coping with them in whatever way you can, a lot of times not fully coping, which then you, you develop bad habits as a result, right? And then moving that new shaped psyche based on experience into the future. And because most people don't actually resolve their pasts and they don't deal with situations well, you get all the fucked up humans we have today and all the really bad behavior. It's unfortunate, but this is the way it is. And so, you know, for today's video, I would, if I had to make a one point, I would, make it about extreme ownership and self-awareness, okay? So extreme ownership is this idea that no matter what happens in your life, it's your fault. Good or bad, it's always your fault. And this is, this very much closely aligns with how I think and live my life in a lot of my study of stoicism, right? Stoicism is about the fundamentally about what can you change in life? Like what can you actually affect? And then focus on that. If there's things you can't change, like opinions of other people, what somebody did, you can't change the past, then it's your job to come to terms with it and then focus on you. What can you do? And then go and do that, right? And then when outcomes happen or don't happen, again, you can't control outcomes. You can only control what you do and you can only control how you respond to outcomes. That's what extreme ownership is as well. In fact, extreme ownership goes another step. It's basically, how can I learn from this thing, right? How could I have done something better? It's like somebody rear ends you. Maybe you should have left early. Maybe you should have been rushing home late and, and slam on your brakes uh, because you're driving too fast. Like there's, you could always go back to the person, the self. Could you have left a little bit earlier so you wouldn't have been stuck in this traffic or, or left later or you know something? Like there's always something that we can do to make outcomes be more favorable for us, right? And when you really focus on that, on yourself, and not other people, not blame, not victimhood, not fucking projecting your shit on the, other, on the world. When you focus on you, the person, what can you do or what could you have done? And what can you learn now based on what happened? A lot of shitty things in life happen, right? People get cancer, they get heart disease, etc. It Like all you can do 
is find out a way to learn from it, hopefully get better, and take action based on that. It's just, it is what it is. If you lose somebody that's important to you, you cannot change the fact that it happened. So every day you spend in, in wallow and despair saying, poor me for this, for this suffering, is energy that is not changing anything. It's making it worse and harder on yourself and you're not finding a way out, right? Instead, you should be finding ways that you can cope, maybe finding ways that you can get stronger, finding ways that you can honor that person, finding ways to be more in the now with people that you love today, right? Maybe, maybe it means getting off your phone more often. Maybe it means like spending more time with your kids. These are all opportunities for growth. In fact, our opportunities for growth come from the most damaging, hurtful, hard things, trials and tribulations we go through in life. They are a wellspring of growth and development. But you have to have an open mindset. You cannot project your problems and your things onto other people or other things. You cannot blame, you cannot be the victim. You have to take extreme ownership for everything in your life. So extreme ownership, uh, not blaming, not projecting, everything boils down to you. Everything does, right? Every single thing in life boils down to you. Whether you've been wronged or not, the only thing that you can control is yourself, your actions. So you can only learn, you can grow, and you can do things differently in the future. And you can come to terms with the past. Don't blame. It's, it's toxic energy. It saps energy. It makes you less productive. It closes off your mind. It just makes you get more of that in the first place. You are what you focus on. If you focus on negativity and blame, you're gonna keep getting it from all angles everywhere in your life. <sighs> so, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If there's any other topics like this you want me to cover or rant on, etc., let me know. I'm here to help you level up your awareness, level up your health, your biology, you know, focus on the things that really matter uh, from, from a health and psychological perspective so that you can live a better life. You know, life is short. Like, let's live well. Life's too short. Stop wasting on nonsense. There's so much nonsense and drama in our, in our lives that goes nowhere, does nothing except make it worse. So what's the point? It's just like, there literally is no point. Okay, that's it. Like and subscribe.